If you have a business organization or other type of venture, you need a website like yesterday. If you're looking for an efficient way to create your website without sacrificing power or learning how to code, you should have a look at Wix. My name is Mark Lassoff. Welcome to this fast track training to getting your website set up with Wix. In this video, which is sponsored by Wix, we're gonna work together to create a website using this powerful tool. Honestly, as a longtime web developer, I was blown away with how much you can do with Wix without writing any code. I'm going to invite you to follow along. You can start by clicking the link below in the description, which also appears on the screen. This will take you to Wix so that you can try out the features that I'm demonstrating. So let's fire up your laptop, crack your knuckles, and get started with today's training. Once you've created your Wix account, this is your account management panel. Yours may look a little bit different than mine since I've already been working in Wix inside this account. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to create a new site. From my panel, I'm gonna click Site Actions and then choose the option Create New Site. Once I've done that, I'm asked a number of questions about the type of website I'd like to create. I'd recommend you explore some of the different categories and look at some of the excellent templates that are available in Wix. I'm actually going to click Other, and there's two options here. You can use the Wix ADI, which will create a website for you, or you can create your own site with the editor. That's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna choose, choose a template. And you can scroll through and there are many beautiful templates here that you can use as a starting point for your site. Any of the templates can be modified to look just about any way you want to include your own photography and branding. Notice that the templates are also categorized here. There's a number of different business and services templates, store templates, and creative templates. I'm actually gonna choose blank template because I wanna start from scratch. And that's the actual name of the template we're gonna use, the start from scratch template. I'm gonna click edit, and Wix is gonna prepare that template for me in the editor. And now we're inside the Wix interface. Over the years, I've learned that most people only use about 20% of the features of any given application. Most of the time, people just don't know what's available. That's why we're gonna spend a few minutes familiarizing ourselves with the Wix environment. This will help us better understand what Wix can do. As you can see, there are a series of menus on the left side. These menus each lead to different types of content that you can add to your Wix pages. Starting from the top, we have the menus and pages option. Here, you can add and manage the pages in your site organize pages into folders, and create site links. If you wish, you also can create animated page transitions. Next up is the page background menu. Here you can choose a color background, an image background, or even a video background for your site. You can select images and videos available directly from Wix, upload your own, or purchase high quality stock from Shutterstock directly within Wix. You can also access crowdsourced images from Unsplash that are free for you to use. Next is the Add menu. The Add menu lets you add over 20 different categories of content to your website. These content categories range from relatively simple, like text and images, to complex elements like full e-commerce stores, content management systems, and member communities. This is the kind of stuff that would take months to code. For all of the elements in the Add menu, you can configure the properties to change the look of the elements to be in line with your site and your branding. Be sure to check out the Video and Music category where you can bring in videos from YouTube or Facebook or just upload your video directly to Wix. You can also add a Spotify player to bring in your favorite playlists. Notice the related apps section of this menu, which lets you bring in apps from the Wix app market. For example, the Wix podcast player is a great way to display your podcast and allow people to listen to episodes right on your site. The entire app market is available in the next menu. Apps are categorized so that you can find what you're looking for. They have everything you need for just about any type of site. Some of these apps are free and some you have to pay for. One of the most popular apps you can use is Wix Chat, which lets you chat with visitors right on your site. 
Next, we'll look at the media section. You can upload your own photos or videos or take advantage of the stock options that are available to you. One of the things I like is that you can upload media directly from Facebook, Instagram, or Google Drive. Any image can be enhanced in the Photo Studio, which is integrated directly into Wix. The blog menu is next. If you want to add a blog to your site, you can do so here. Blogs are great for not only getting your thoughts out, but also for search engine optimization. A blog will help your site rank higher in Google, which will lead to more site traffic. The next item is the online bookings module. If you're the type of business that books one-to-one -one sessions with clients or group classes, you're going to want to implement this. It'll allow your clients to book time, pay for their session, and receive reminders. With Wix, you can configure this module in just a few minutes. It would actually take months of coding to develop this feature. The last menu on the left side of the Wix interface is the marketing and SEO menu. Wix includes a number of features that will help you market your website. This includes email marketing, SEO tools, social media posting, and integrations with tools like Google Analytics. This is also where you'll keep track of your site contacts and get reporting on your site performance. Whew, that's a lot of features. I'd recommend that you explore these features on your own. Click on the menus and look at the different elements you can add to your site. You may even get content ideas just by looking at what's available. For any of the elements you add to your site, you can adjust the various properties, for example, the element size and location on the page. When it comes to making adjustments, the editor toolbar can be very helpful. By default, the editor toolbar appears on the right side of the user interface, but you can move it around if you want to. When you click any elements in your site, the relevant options will come alive in the toolbar. Some toolbar options, like the ones that align in space elements, only come alive if two elements within your site are selected. If you point at any of the tools inside the toolbar, you'll see a tooltip pop up to document what that tool does. I'd like you to pay close attention to the bottom half of the toolbar. Web layout is based on X and Y coordinates. If you select any item on your page, both the width and height of the elements and the X and Y position of the elements are shown. Note that the X and Y coordinates are based on the upper left-hand corner of the element. One thing I found particularly useful is the Layers panel, which pops up when you click the word Layers in the Editor toolbar. The Layers panel will show you a text outline of the content placed on your site and allow you to select any item by clicking it. Of course, Wix is built to allow you to manage multiple pages within a website. That's why we have the Page drop-down menu. Right now, the site only contains two pages, Home and About Us. If I click the Manage Pages option under the menu, now I'm able to actually manage the pages within the site. I can move from one page to another. I can add a page and give it a title. I'm going to call this page Our Company. And now I have a third page on this site. I can also use this menu to create links between pages on my site or links to a website outside of my site and also create anchors for emails, phone numbers, and other types of site features. Each page has a page menu, which allows me to rename, duplicate, hide, or even delete an individual page on the site. It's important to remember that users will be viewing our site not just on large screen monitors, but also on mobile devices. It's really important that the site looks good across the array of screens that our users might use. In this part of the interface, we can switch to a mobile view, which shows us exactly how the site will look on a mobile device. We can switch back to a desktop view just by clicking the icon that looks like a monitor. One more menu that I think it's important for you to be aware of is the Tools menu in the interface. In the Tools menu, we can turn on and off various tools that will help us create the site. For example, the Toolbar, Individual Site Layers panel, Rulers, which can show us how big elements on the site are, Grid Lines, and the Snap to Objects option which will allow an object to snap to the grid lines to make it easier to align. 
I think we've had a pretty thorough orientation to Wix and the available tools. Now let's build a basic site together step by step. If you want to work with the same images I'm using, there's a link to download them below. You might want to pause the video so that you can stay caught up with each individual step. We're going to be creating a page for a real estate site. We're going to add images, text, and even make a video for the site all within Wix. I'm here within the Wix My Sites page, which lists all the sites I have in my Wix account. For our project, I'm going to create a new site. So I'm going to click the Create New Site button now. I don't want to use one of the existing templates, so I'm going to click Other. And I'm going to use the Editor versus the ADI, so I'll click Choose a Template. I'm going to use the blank templates and start from scratch. And now Wix is creating my new site. And the first thing we're going to do is set background for the site. If I click here in the center, the option to change the page background appears. I'm going to click that. And now we can see the page background options. We can choose a color, an image, or a video. Let's start with an image. I click image. and it's going to give me the option to upload the file for my image. I can either drag it into this square area or click Upload Media and navigate from my desktop to my Wix folder. And I'm going to use this image right here, which has a subtle background. The item is uploading. I'm going to click the Change Background button. And now you can see we've got this subtle pattern image as our background. Had I wanted to, I could choose a color for the background. And it gives me several colors to choose from. Obviously, the colors that I desire might not be part of this matrix. So if I click Edit, I'm shown a number of different color palettes I can choose from. And these colors are all designed to go together. I can also add colors to my colors here at the bottom. If I know the hexadecimal formulation for the color, I can just type it in here, or I can choose a color by using the palette at the top. I want to choose a deep kind of sea blue. I think that works, and I'll click Add. And now my background reverts to the color that I've selected. Let's actually go back to the image background that we'd uploaded. I think that looks the best for the site that we're going to be developing. In Wix, the parts of the page are divided into three distinct sections. At the top of the page is the header. Many websites include a logo and navigation in the page header and repeat it on every page of the site. The footer is at the bottom of the page. It can be used for many different purposes. Some websites repeat navigation on the bottom of the page or have contact information. It's really up to you. Like with the header, most sites repeat the same footer on every page of the website. This allows for some design consistency and branding, but also helps provide the users a good experience as they know exactly where to look for important page elements. You'll also note vertical dotted lines that appear on the left hand and right hand side of the page. They look kind of like page margins. It might be helpful to think of these lines as boundaries or the safe area. Remember that users will be viewing your website on many different size screens. Keep your content between these lines, and that'll ensure that your content is visible, whether someone is looking at the site on a large screen monitor or a small mobile device. You'll notice if we click on the header, a sizing handle appears. We can drag the sizing handle up and down to change the size of the header itself. Notice that as I drag the header line using the stretch handle, as the size changes, the height value in the Tools panel reflects that change. If I leave the header line selected, I'm able to type the value directly into the header field of the toolbar. This can be useful if I need an exact value. By the way, I don't know exactly how big the header or footer should be at this point, and that's OK. I can adjust the header and footer size at any time. When I click on either the header or the footer, 
a button appears to change the header or footer design. If I click change header design, I'm able to use a number of prepackaged designs to control how the header looks. I can choose one of these simply by clicking on it, or I can customize the design using the customize design option. This allows me to change the gradient and pattern of the color, the color itself and its opacity, whether or not I want a border around the header, the corners of the header, and whether or not I want the header to have a drop shadow. Once I've selected the options I want, I can close the dialog box and the header will appear exactly as I've defined. Every site needs good images, especially the site we're building. One of the great things about Wix is access to loads of images that you can use even if you don't have your own. If you do want to upload your own images, you can do so in the media panel or you can use the add button and choose the image category. We're going to do just that. So we'll click add and then image. If you've uploaded images previously to Wix, you'll find them under my image uploads. This is also where you'll go to upload new images to Wix for your site. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at the other options available here. There are two free collections, free Wix images, which is a collection of images you can use in your site for free. And the second collection is free Wix illustrations, which contains illustrated art. High quality stock images are available to you as well. You can search Shutterstock's stunning collection of stock art right from here and purchase the rights to use any of the images that you'd like. If you have images you'd like to use that are already part of your social media, you can connect to your Facebook, Instagram, and Flickr accounts here and access those images. We're going to click My Image Uploads and then the Upload Media button. Here you can drag and drop images you want to use just like I'm doing right here. If you store images on your Google Drive, Dropbox, or in other locations, you can connect to those accounts and access those images directly from here as well. Now that we have these images as part of our media library, we're simply going to click the one we want and then click the Add to Page button at the bottom of the dialog box. At this point, I think I'd like to add some text to our site. We need to identify the property address and the price. So I'm going to click the plus sign for Add and I'm going to choose the text option. And there's quite a bit here. The text we can add is actually divided into three separate categories. Theme text, text titles, and paragraphs. Let's look at the titles. Notice there's several different typefaces here and variations of typefaces. We can choose any one that we want. and drag it onto our web page. I'm going to choose the all caps title. Notice that it's superimposed over my picture. So I'm going to move it into place and move the picture down a little bit. And then I'm going to double click on the text and I'm going to change what the text says. This is 44 Maple Avenue South. We're going to expand the text box to allow for all the text. As I press enter, the text box expands vertically. Westport, Connecticut. All right, so I've added my first bit of text. If I want to add more text, I can again click plus to add text. And again, just drag text out of the dialog box. Let's use small title this time for the price. I'm going to change the text. Let's say this home is $495,000 and we'll drag the text directly into place. Move our picture up a little bit and we've added our text. Now let's say we had a description of the home that we wanted to add below this main picture. This time I'm going to click add and text, but we're going to use paragraph text. I'm going to choose a style that I like drag it into place and notice how it's inserted down here. So we'll have to make some room for the text, drag all the way across 
And I've already got some text stored, so I'm simply going to paste it into place and add some room between the paragraphs. So now I've added body text and I've added heading text. Any text that I've added, I can make changes to simply by selecting the text and I can change the font or the font size. Let's make this bigger. And again, we'll have to expand the text box to accommodate. I think I like what I see here. The one thing I'd recommend you watch out for is there's so many different text options within Wix. It's real easy to use too many text combinations and make your design look a little bit amateurish. Stick to one or two different typefaces and your design will always look good. I thought for this site, it would be cool to make a video out of our images, kind of like an automated slideshow. We're gonna use Wix's video maker feature to create our video from the uploaded photos and then place it in a featured location in our website. As someone who makes videos for a living, I can tell you this is a huge time saver. Let's get on with the demo. To create the video, I'm gonna to go to media and then inside the media dialog, there's the video maker option. Let's check it out. Inside the video maker, we see a, another dialog box that's asking us to add photos and videos. We can actually add up to 15 individual photos or videos to make the final video. So I'm gonna click the plus sign and I'm actually gonna add all of the images that we had uploaded before and are part of our media library. I'm not gonna use the background image, of course. Click add to video and notice all these are now part of our video. We can also embed some text inside our video. So let's add some opening text with the property address for our website. Let's add some secondary text with the city and state. For the third text, we'll use the price, which I think we said was $495,000. And then the closing text, let's have a contact and then a phone number, just like that. We'll continue through the wizard here and it gives us some choices for styling. We're just gonna go for the minimal style. And we can add some music as well. I think chill would be appropriate for this. You can test any of the music here simply by clicking the play button to sample it. And finally, we can add some business information if we want to. I'm gonna skip that. It takes a few moments for Wix to create the actual video from the photos that we've provided. And once the video is ready, we can preview it. We can return to editing it to make changes or we can add it to our website. I'm gonna click add to product site and then we can add it to the site like any other element by positioning it exactly where we want it and selecting a size. So there we go. So now we have our video slideshow right below the featured photo and text for our website. I think this would be an excellent point to preview our website. So I'm gonna click the preview button and now I can see exactly what the website would look like when someone's viewing it in the browser. We have our video at the bottom, our text, our initial photo, and our opening text plus our header. We can also see what our design would look like on a mobile device and make sure everything looks okay for our mobile users. When I'm done, I'll click back to the editor and switch back to our desktop view. This type of website would usually require additional information about the real estate listing. Let's go ahead and add that information in a grid. I'm gonna to go to our add menu. There's a lists and grids category. If we take a quick look through here, there's actually a number of different attractive designs we could use. I'm gonna use this one right here. Now this is gonna require some adjustment because it's designed to be a sidebar but we can adjust its width and size in order to fit in our site. 
Let's drag it down into place below our video. I can adjust its overall width and then adjust the width of the individual boxes to fill the space. That looks good. If I wanted to, I could click on any individual item and edit the text and also edit the text settings. Here we could change the font, the font size, and elements like whether or not the text appears bold, italics, etc. If I want to change what the text says, simply triple click in the box and then I can make edits. Great family home. Since we're creating a real estate style site today, it probably makes sense to add a map to our website. Wix allows easy integration with Google Maps. I'm going to click the Add button again, and inside the Contact and Forms category, I'll select Maps. There are a couple different styles. I'll choose one that I like, and then size it and place it on my page. Now I'll right click on the map and select the Manage Locations option. I'm going to enter the address of our property, a title, and a short description. Once I do that, the label on the map itself changes. I'm going to right click on the map again and choose Settings. I can zoom in and out to get the perspective that I want, as well as choose which features I want to have available to users. I'm actually going to turn most of these map features off. And there we got a great area map that shows where the property is. As is the case with most sites we develop, we want to give users a way of contacting us. So let's go to the Add option again. And under Contacts and Forms, you'll notice we have a number of different types of forms. Payment forms, donation forms, job applications. We just need a simple contact form in this case, and I'm going to use the one in the upper left-hand corner. It's been added to the site, but it's not sized correctly, so I'll drag it into place. We want it below the map. And we can actually adjust the size of elements in the form itself, so the form goes all the way across our page. Now that I have the form looking just the way I want, it's time to do a little bit of configuration. I'm going to click the Form Settings button, and now I can set a number of different options for my form. For example, if I want to receive an email notification, I can set that up here. I can also set up a message that the user receives when they submit the form. By default, Wix will keep a table of submissions to your form, so you have a place to track all the information. The next topic is an important one. There are entire books and huge courses on this topic, search engine optimization. Most of the time as a website developer, you want your site to be appropriately listed on search engines. In this segment of the video, I'm going to demonstrate the features that will help you get higher rankings in search engines and make your site more likely to be found. In order to set myself up for successful search engine optimization, I'm first going to click on the Menus and Pages option, and then in the Site menu, I'm going to click on the page I want to set up, and you can see I've got several options here. I'm going to choose SEO. This will allow me to select how my page appears in Google. There are several important options here. The first is the slug or the page URL. This is going to be the actual name of the page, and it's one of the factors Google looks at in ranking your site. It would probably make sense to slug this as 44 Maple Avenue. The next option is the page title. I'm going to call this Property for Sale in Westport. What I'm thinking about are terms that someone might search in order to find this particular page. And then we have the About section. This goes underneath the listing in Google, and this is what people read and decide whether or not they're actually going to visit the page. So here we could put something like beautiful family home for sale in Westport, move in condition, a must see. I might also want to consider putting some additional keywords in that description. So now if this page is listed in Google, you can see a preview of what that Google entry will look like. 
property for sale in Westport, beautiful family home, etc. Now, by the way, the URL here is the default URL provided by Wix. I would obviously want to register and use my own URL instead of the Wix URL if I'm serious about having this site found on Google. There are additional SEO options here under the Ascend Business Tools. If we go to under Ascend Marketing and SEO and then choose the SEO tools, here we can create sitemaps, which Google uses to find every page of your site. We can edit our robots.txt and engage in a number of other activities that are important to enhance your listing on Google. There's also this get found on Google option. This will take you through a series of procedures to help you pick keywords, create a personalized plan, and make sure your site is ranked on Google. I'd recommend doing this when you have all the content laid out for your site. Oftentimes people engage outside professionals to assist with SEO, but Wix has many of the tools you need right here in house in order to make sure your site is listed and ranked in the Google search engine. When your site is complete, you're going to want to make it available to the general public on the web. That's what the publish button is for. When you click the publish button, it'll give you a dialog box where you can publish your site and make it available to the web. Again, by default, this is the Wix site URL. You're going to want to connect to your own branded domain to make sure your site is found under a domain name that makes sense for your business. So that's it. We used Wix and in just a few minutes built a site with really neat features. If you haven't done so yet, I'd encourage you to sign up for Wix using the link below. You'll be building powerful, attractive websites in no time at all. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Lassoff. Bye till next time.